session, uh, very starting with the sustainable packaging technologies. Mainly, we are going to discuss about 5R, that is a reuse, reduce, recycle, uh, and how we are going to use the packaging industry for the future. That's what the whole session is uh, going to look into that. Before going to the actual discussion, I would like to introduce our panel member. First, I am going to moderate. I am Anantha Ramakrishnan, Director, CSIR NIST Truandrum. Before taking uh, as the Director of uh, CSIR Lab, I was the Director of Niptam Tanjavo, six years. I was a basically a chemical engineer, worked in the food process engineering at CSIR CFTRI Mysore. Uh, now I over to the Virinder, please. Sure, thank you, Doctor. Uh, I'm Virinder Jaswal, uh, part of Mondelez. For last 19 years, I started as a grad back in Melbourne in the R&D center. And uh, in my current role, I am responsible for India R&D, Southeast Asia R&D, as well as I, um, I lead the Global Technical Center based out of Thane. Um, as I said, be, uh, been with the organization for ni 19 years in uh, man many uh, different roles across different categories. So glad to be here today. Thank you. So hi, good morning everyone. My name is Deepthan Chatterjee and I am Head of Corporate Affairs and Government Relations with Tetra Pak South Asia. Uh, primarily I look after India uh, and the other South Asian nations, uh, primarily Bangladesh, Nepal, Sri Lanka. Uh, I'm responsible for looking after the public policy uh, and advocacy objectives of Tetra Pak and mostly coordinate across this region. But as you can imagine, India being the largest market that we have, this is where most of our activities are concentrated in. Thank you. Yeah, uh, very good morning to one and all. I'm Vimal Katia. Though I'm an odd man out here, I'm a, a professor in Department of uh, Chemical Engineering at IIT Guwahati. And uh, my area of research is very much on a food packaging and taking care of uh, mostly on bio-based biodegradable plastics. Uh, so it's a really great, great honor for me to be a part of uh, uh, this meeting and would like to deliberate on those. Thanks. Hi, good morning, everyone. This is Amit Bhaseen. Uh, I'm Chief Legal Officer for Merico Limited. Uh, in my role, I take care of uh, legal and regulatory requirement for Merico in India and in international. Uh, I'm part of the executive committee of uh, Merico. I also lead corporate social responsibility vertical for my company. Uh, before Merico, I have spent bulk of my career with Unilever, 13, 14 years with Unilever. I thought I am the odd one out here because a lawyer between all the doctors and technical people, but uh, I would try my best to kind of contribute uh, to this topic uh, to the best of my ability. Glad to be here. Thanks, Amit. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's delighted to be part of this distinguished panel. Uh, I'm Sujata Jairaman. I head the R&D for uh, foods and refreshment part of the business for Hindustan Unilever. And also, I'm the global lead for the beverages business for Unilever. Uh, the, the, uh, what's my day-to-day -day look like? I'm responsible for uh, leading the innovations, renovations, and also steer the sustainability initiatives for uh, the company. Uh, and they drive the positive nutrition. So very delighted to be here because this is something requires a collective wisdom and uh, contribution from everybody to make a change uh, to the country and uh, overall to the planet. Hi, uh, good morning everyone. I'm delighted and I'm pleased to, uh, know, to be here. Uh, it's a pleasure. And myself, I'm Kadirvan Shanmugunathan. I'm a principal scientist at CSIR National Chemical Laboratory. Uh, I work in the Polymer Science and Engineering Division. My research area is mainly focused on biopolymers and uh, basically cellulose-based materials, nanocellulose-based materials as coatings and composites for diverse applications. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, maybe you can sit here. Some of the chairs are there, students. Please come here. You need to stand. You would like to take some chairs are there here. Uh, please move. 
Before going to the detailed discussion, I want to give that for the benefit of the student and some people are due to the sustainable packaging. Just I'll give the brief introduction about what is the sustainable packaging and how we can achieve because the whole world is looking for net zero 2050 and India has declared 2070 we are going to achieve net zero 2070. But packaging plays a major role. If you are not address the packaging solutions or sustainable packaging, we are not going to achieve the net zero in the future. If you look at every minute, India is 15,000 multi-layer packaging, already Tetra Pak person is sitting here. And we are purchasing and we are dumping and recycling, already we are doing it. 2010, our consumption is almost 4.3 kg per person per year consumption. Now it is increased 8.6 kg per year. It is a huge. And India is generating more waste only behind US and EU. Uh, where it goes? It goes to the all our rivers, whatever the water bodies. This may be the alarming to you. We are taking 5 gram of microplastic per week, equivalent to one credit card size plastics we are taking, 900 microplastics we are taking. And recent studies very clearly demonstrated it is crossing blood-brain barrier. Exactly it is crossing. Earlier we thought it's not. It's coming out from our body. Now it is crossing the blood-brain barrier. And how we are going to address? If you are not going to address these microplastic issues, or the bisphenol leaching out all the chemicals from the plastics to the, our food system, we need to face huge challenge in the coming years. One side, yes, we are talking about the net zero. Another side, if you look at our health issues, also integrate part of this all packaging. But market is tremendous. It is continuously increasing. The global market is 1.14 trillion to the 1.38 trillion market projected because one processed food waste market is going up. Obviously, it will go. Indian market, right, we are predicting 535 billion next year. Market size is going to be there. Automatically, packaging market also will go up. If you look at what are the material used. Mainly we are using the paper, next flexible pair. Plastic, rigid, metal, glass, and other things. This is the what percentage. Predominantly, if you look at 33% of paper and flexible plastic is 25%, 18% rigid. This is the what mostly occupied our packaging. But only 9% of the plastics are recycled, and 17% of the global waste is the paper waste. Paper may be the alternative, but deforestation also happening. That in turn is contributes reduction of the our carbon dioxide. And what is the demand is 2030 is predicted 1.34 gigaton CO2 emission. That means 500 megawatt of coal, five coal power plant. What is the emission of CO2 equivalent to that? So we are talking on side the carbon footprint reduction of all these things. But indirectly, if you look at increase in the demand of packaging will lead to that India generate almost 26,000 tons of the packaging. Everywhere packaging, if you go to the ocean and soil, all, everywhere it is there. 380 million tons of the plastic is produced. Plastic, if you take it up, only 50% consider 50% is recycled, almost 190 million tons. It's going there. That means 1 million animal dies every year because of what we are enjoying. Take that one chocolate, just five minutes enjoyment of the chocolate. Think about the wrapper, where it ends, what it affects. Your enjoyment, our enjoyment, the five minutes leads to that. And per year, 18 kg of plastics we are eating. Right now it is the one ton to three ton ratio, one is to three ratio of fish and plastics in the our sea. In 2050 it is going to be almost equal four ton to three ton. We can't afford to do that. This earth is not only for you and me, it's for all. So that concern, we need to keep it in mind when you are thinking about what we wanted to do that. And not only that, economical loss also, if you consider the maximum level of 14%, we are recycling the plastics. Still, the worth is the almost 80 to 120 billion size of the worth we are losing because of we are not able to recycle. This data a little bit old data from the CPCB, uh, whatever it is there. 2015, it's a 15 lakh uh, tons per annum. Now it increased 34 ton lakhs of the plastics waste is generated. What is the alternative? We are everywhere we are using the paper. Is it a paper is the right alternative? No, 15 billion trees are we are cutting. One side, tree will help to reduction of the CO2 we are cutting, but 
converting tree into the paper is not that easy. You need to use chemicals to bleaching and that water pollution, everything has increased. That's what four times higher energy needed, 70% more air pollution is created by the paper. That's what we have to think, which is the other alternative than the plastics. Is it a glass? Is a 100% recycled, but only 27% only right now we are doing. Remaining 73% is goes to the landfill. If you wanted to regenerate, it creates more COT emission than the normal one in the glass. So we don't have the alternative. Even that glass is not the better. Aluminium, yes, is fine, but if you look at CO2 produced per ton of the production of the aluminium can compared to the PET, it is the PET one ton is produced, CO2 is 2.23 tons of the CO2, the same thing, aluminium in produce 12. So, so the option is very, very limited. That's what I wanted to say today. Panel is going to discuss what is there in, in front of us alternative? Paper, plastics, or the glass, or the multi-layer, or the composites, which is the one better? If you look at that 1.8 billion tons of the greenhouse gases emitted, and 10% of the emission is happening because of the transport of this packaging material. That also add into that, and 79% of their landfills, but sustainable packaging may help. That's what we need to look. And recent data clearly demonstrated consumer wanted to pay more. 57% of the populations of consumers wanted to buy sustainable packaged product. And 71% of the consumer wanted to pay more for sustainable packaging. That trend is really good. Even India trend also is encouraging. And the packaging, sustainable packaging market also growing at the rate of 7%. In this scenario, we need to look, each one is different paper. We need a different type of approach needed, innovations needed, coatings needed. Can we use the paper as the conductive material and leaching out how we solve the plastics? Already I explained coatings needed, different type of coating adhesives and the metal glass composites. Mainly testing and monitoring has to be established in our nation. Proper biodegradability testing, microplastic and traceability. Blockchain can help or not, we don't know. How we are going to address the present scenario? This is not only affecting the industry and also our health. So today, we'll open up the discussion with, you can't find a person what you are sitting in the dais like this, academic to the industry who handles day-to-day -day about food and food packaging. If you go to the any shop, which is the one you look more than the food, more than the taste of that food, the cover attracts. First, your eyesight, where it goes, the color of the packaging, color of the attraction, the font, everything attracts. That's what tempted you to pick up that product. So that behave more than the safeguarding the food packaging is gives the market trend. So hope we will discuss on all the things. We'll start with the one by one. Vimal, I wanted, uh, Virender, I wanted to start with you. How you think like this five hours can reasonably achieved in present scenario? Thank you. I think uh, you have set the context very well. Um, but I will just maybe start with role of packaging. I think, uh, I mean, it's one of the wonderful innovations that has happened in the human sort of, uh, you know, life cycle as well. I mean, it's a very versatile material. I know uh, in today's time it has become a demon, but if basically you remove packaging um, and even with the packaging, there are almost 20% of the food never actually makes it to the human consumption or to the, uh, or, or to the total uh, value chain. Uh, so packaging has a very important role. Right, basically you mentioned uh, it is a silent advertiser, but beyond that it helps with the portion control from a health and well-being well perspective. It uh, provides the food safety, the uh, portability, helps to transfer uh, across the borders. Uh, it's nearly half a trillion dollar economy globally. So it employs a lot of people uh, in the industry as well. But rightly said, uh, as the uh, progression has happened as the growth has happened as uh, we have evolved into uh, many different type of uh, plastics and packaging uh, it has also become a minance because one it's the origin is from fossil fuel two uh, it's uh, leading to um, 
imbalance in the environment causing a lot of harm as you have already said. Uh, I think globally also the numbers are very similar. Only 9% of the plastic actually gets recycled. 85% actually end up being in the landfills. A very small proportion gets used for the energy. And the numbers for India are no different. I think some numbers quote that there is depending on which type of plastic, 60-70% gets recycled, but the reality is when you take the total plastic, uh, it's only 8-9%. And India being a, one of the high growth countries, uh, I think today we are producing some 26 million tons of plastic, we will move to some 70,000 million tons. Uh, so that will only compound the impact uh, that we have today. So, but I think when it comes to how do we manage this, uh, manage this sort of menace, I think there is no one way. It's multiple ways, uh, and and it's the total ecosystem. So it's not only about uh, like you know only plastic recycling. I think there are number of other things that we have to do, and I think what's the best way for me to kind of you know um, emphasize on that by giving a couple of examples that we as Mondelez are doing. Uh, as we, as they say, what gets uh, measured gets done. So I think today's time uh, with my colleagues uh, here, I think most of the big companies have global targets. They have regional targets to help with the reducing uh, the the uh, the bad uh, sort of plastics or in terms of recycling. So as Mondelez, uh, we have a target of. Uh, 100% uh, design for recyclability uh, in near future. Today we are around 96% of our plastic is actually designed for recyclability. Uh, we have a target of 5% virgin uh, plastic reduction. And further, we also have a very uh, aggressive target on use of recycled plastic to replace the virgin plastic. Um, and I think the challenge still is that, you know, while we are sort of moving towards design for recyclability, there is significant amount of plastic that still needs a lot of technological development. Similarly, uh, in terms of replacing, uh, we have already, uh, sorry, removing uh, in terms of the five R's, we have already removed uh, all the uh, bad materials like plastics, for sake of example, uh, the shrink wraps, uh, the, the, uh, the PVC shrink wraps, we have replaced it with the PET shrink wraps. Uh, further, we are going one step ahead, we are uh, trying to replace that with poly uh, olefins, which are even better than PET. Uh, similarly, we have removed the carbon black, which is a contaminant, hence kind of inhibits how much recycling you can do. Uh, we have started using between 50 to 80 percent of uh, PCR material in some of our products. Uh, for sake of example, uh, in some of the uh, trays that we use, the plastic trays that we used, or the poly bags that we use for the secondary material. Unfortunately, in India, still we don't have a regulation around uh, primary packaging. Uh, so that obviously we'll discuss more in the challenge. Uh, and going further, uh, we are also trialing a lot of uh, paper type of packaging. Obviously, I agree with you. Is paper the only solution? Perhaps not. Uh, but I think it's about the life cycle and it's about the kind of product. So it. But it is one of those, uh, based on like how much carbon emission it creates, it is one of those uh, materials that has a promise. Uh, then I think in some countries we are also doing chemical recycling. Like for in Australia, we will be, uh, we have committed to using 50% of chemically recycled material in our chocolates so that you can have a smile and enjoy the chocolate as well. Um, and uh, we are partnering with uh, 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 organizations like uh, Ocean Circulate Funds. Uh, uh, and I think those are the organizations really uh, spearheading this campaign in terms of removing plastics, investing in the companies that are actually uh, helping to prevent uh, plastic going into the landfill. Uh, finally, uh, I think I missed out on the EPR targets. Like as an organization, I think we are very committed towards that as well. And we are almost recycling 105, 107% of whatever we are producing today. So I think there are opportunities. Uh, I think the good thing is that the government and the organizations are very uh, strongly committed. And obviously, it's a journey. It's not a job done yet. So, uh, But I think with this commitment, I think I'm sure one day we will get there. Thank you, Arendar. It's nicely has put up how the Mondelez is taking the forward for the achieving the sustainable packaging in the different line. Now I'll move on to the uh, Vimal Katya. He's the professor in IIT Gauhati. Sir, one point is that we wanted to go for the biopolymers. 
we have the PLA, PLG, all these things are there. But main issue what we are thinking in the biopolymer is the barrier property, printability, when we are going for extrude in the last scale is the huge challenge we are facing. How to address this the one side. Second one also I wanted to listen from you. How to segregate? Okay, we are putting all this biopolymer now brought into the things. When it comes to the bulk, we have the normal polymer packaging film as well as biopolymer. How to segregate this one? That also another challenge in front of us in country like India. Please, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Anand. Uh, we all understand that plastic is a wonderful material. That's what we are experienced and that's what we have reached to this level. And if you're really going to talk about, uh, there's a huge contribution of the plastic towards the packaging. The 40% of the plastic goes into the packaging and when we talk about as far as the food packaging are concerned, out of it 50% goes into the food packaging applications. Though, uh, I mean to say in various sector of a pa uh, uh, the plastic, uh, uh, utilities we could able to recycle and we can use for a long time. However, the packaging, if you if you're really going to see that uh, food packaging area where we used to have a big challenge, uh, uh, especially when we talk about the end of life options. You have mentioned about uh, 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 biopolymers and biodegradable pl uh, plastic and what is right, what what is the fate of this plastic and how it is going to be a supersede or comparable with the conventional plastics. We understood that we, we dedicate the whole century to come up with the, uh, come up with the various class of the plas uh, polymers. Uh, uh, discuss like when we talk about the flexible packaging, we need LDP, LLDP, what we wanted to go semi rigid. We have HDP, we further, we're going to po uh, 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 polypropylene. If you really would like to drink uh, Coke and uh, some carbonated drink, we don't have these solutions, then we have to go to the PET because of the barrier properties. So th there are the segments of, uh, I mean the class of polymers which use for a different segments. So that's what, uh, uh, as far as uh, biodegradable plastics are concerned, though uh, right now you might be seen that it's a quite a fancy and many kind of a product has already been demonstrated here and there in the market. Basically, mostly it's going for a kind of a carry bags and all those. As you correctly pointed out, uh, we could not able to find these class of a material, especially for high barrier packaging. Because if you really would like to replace the PET with one of the plastic like PLA, uh, we have to reduce oxygen transmission rate by tenfold and water vapor transmission rate two to threefold in order to meet the requirement of the PET. So the fact that uh, though it has been seen that there are the availability of the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, polymers that we consider as a uh, 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 compostable plastic, here I would like to, for my students' perspective, I would like to mention when I talk about the bioplastic and bio-based plastic, I mean that the, at least the 30% carbon has to come from the renewable feedstock. And it's really going to help to have a shorter the carbon cycle. And when I, and very much it's related to the beginning of life option. And another aspect why we are looking for this class of plastic, because we would like to explore the end of life option. And when you see the end of life option, we would like to take out the carbon from environmental compartment. So that is what, uh, and through a, a, a biodegradation or composting, and uh, when we call about the compostable polymer as per the standards what has been there and uh, uh, what we practice that 90% of the carbon has to go into the carbon dioxide in 180 days time. So these are the advantages when we are replacing the conventional plastic to the bio, uh, so called biodegradable plastic. But in a current industrial context we will talk about the compostable plastic. So, uh, uh, the, what are the limitations? Yes, if you're really going to go for the regular packaging applications, uh, I mean to say there are some of the plastics like carry bag, PET can, uh, PVAT can serve the purpose, even PVSA can just serve the purpose. And the same time when we go for a further, uh, the, uh, the bit uh, better barrier properties, uh, the PLA can also serve the purpose. But the fact that a lot of re uh, research and uh, translation research need to be done because most of the time packaging require not only the barrier but also the uh, service conditions as well. 
uh, more or less when we talk about the high temperature applications. None of these plastics serve the applications, serve the purpose. It means though the materials are available, but it cannot be used for the purpose. Barrier is a very, very important uh, parameters. Though the fundamental uh, uh, structure of this polymer cannot serve the purpose, it means the new formulation has to come. Where the, the R&D institutions work with the academia to come up with the newer formulations. Sometimes the architecture of the polymer may not support, but the, uh, 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 the synergistic effect of other uh, molecules uh, may affect, may, may help. There are certain, uh, uh, I mean to say, we really want, we see the chitose and chitin that has come from the shell, and it has been found that if you're really going to see that it's, it's having very good oxygen barrier. There are attempt has been made while adding of these kind of, uh, some of these kind of the fillers and nanofillers, uh, which can enhance the barrier property significantly. And it has been found some of the reports uh, that even though by addition of 0.5 to 1% of these kind of uh, uh, non-toxic biopolymers, when it goes into the synthetic biodegradable plastic, can enhance the barrier and reduce oxygen transmission rate by tenfold and the water vapor around twofold. It it's what I wanted to convey, that the fact that we may not have a ready solution from the fundamental chemistry perspective, but being an engineer, we could able to engineer, engineer our formulations and can uh, uh, support the ecosystem. However, uh, you know, the ba basic challenge about this class of a plastic, though we talked about when we really going to see about the commercial entity in the country, I really find, find not, none of the organization who are producing this class of the plastic, uh, so-called biodegradable plastics. The, some light has come, one of the company, uh, I can name it, uh, the Balram Puccini, they have come forward to come up with a 100,000 meter ton plant of one class of the plastic, but that cannot be served the purpose. We really need to come across because when we talk about 2.6 billion uh, uh, meter ton, uh, that is a requirement or more than that, uh, so it seems like uh, 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 the huge uh, uh, requirement of the plastic, but not only one class. There are many s class of the plastic which can serve the requirement. Uh, so this is just uh, my intro. Thank you, Professor. It's nicely point out what is the issues we are facing the currently. The fillers, as he mentioned about MMT clay, we attempted it, but still we are not able to achieve what is the barrier property or the strength what we wanted to do it in the either both the biopolymers, PLA or PLG. But one industry has really done revolution in this area is the Tetra Pak. That we thought it is a difficult, but multi-layer packaging is done really good job for us, mainly for the liquid system and we transport or the supply. But I wanted to know from uh, our Deepan Chatterjee, like uh, how the future of this, is it uh, we stop with what the layers now we are doing? Can we reduce the layer? Can we have uh, aluminum instead of that? Any other material can help us to go further in that because the cost comes to the play when we go for the multi-layer packaging. In your thought on that, please. Thank you so much. Um, to start with, let me just uh, tell you about a little br uh, brief about uh, Tetra Pak's history. So Tetra Pak was started in Sweden way back in 1951. And what essentially started was as a packaging solution for beverages, primarily milk. Between 1951 and now, uh, and we have been in India since 1987, so almost 37, 38 years now in India, uh, the one focus has been to ensure that our packaging is not only solving the food safety problem, but is also constantly working on a sustainable solution for the packaging. Uh, so just to recap, a typical carton that Tetra Pak produces has three layers. The majority, which is the paper or the paper board, is comprised of about 70 to 75% of the package. Uh, then we have a plastic layer, which is about 20%, and the remaining 5% is aluminium. Each of these layers has a certain function. It is there to protect the internal contents from any kind of contamination, any kind of exposure to moisture, heat, uh, because primarily we want to keep food safe. Okay? Uh, just, just to recap also, our company's motto is protects what's good. Okay? 
that's a very simple philosophy but it's a very powerful philosophy that actually decides the way we operate as an organization now coming back to your question uh, sir uh, around how we are constantly working around uh, thinking about how do we make our layers more renewable or more environment friendly that's the pursuit that we have globally um, and we are constantly innovating i will just take a couple of examples uh, to support what uh, you know what we have been doing so far as an example uh, last year uh, we partnered with a company called lactogal and wherein we ended up having an increased amount of the paper paper board uh, then instead of the plastic we actually switched to a sugarcane based polymer and that effectively increased the renewable content of the package to almost 90% okay similarly as we move into uh, various other forms of packaging which is more innovative we are also looking at enhancing the processing side of uh, things because as you can imagine processing and packaging goes along hand in hand so as an example um, we have a machine which is called the e3 speed hyper machine is the fastest filling machine that is there available in the market close to 40000 packs per hour the reason what it does is it actually saves a lot of time in enhances the productivity and in general it will also kind of enhance or reduce the greenhouse gas emissions of the entire production process uh, we also started using couple of years back the e beam technology what it does is when we have the packaging uh, material for sterilizing it traditional solutions were to use hydrogen peroxide we now shifted to an electronic beam and steadily what we saw is that there is a instant reduction in the amount of the the um, the electricity that is consumed the water that is consumed in producing the package almost close to 30% less right uh, so that is there and other than that we have also been constantly working to see how we can increase the non renewable parts for example aluminum and plastics for example you mentioned uh you know sugarcane based polymers are there uh, you know we are also ensuring that all our paper board is responsibly sourced when i say responsibility re responsibly what i mean is that all our paper board is sourced from fsc forest stewardship council certified forests and therefore what it means is uh, the the source is being used in a responsible manner uh when i also mentioned the sugarcane based polymers again that is certified by bon sucro which means that we have a chain of custody that can be established from the time the polymer is sourced until the time it is used in the packaging um we are also constantly innovating on the packaging per se for example last year i'm i'm not sure how many of you remember but we had actually launched this uh, package called tetra recart it's a retortable package which essentially is a very innovative way of packaging especially some of the things that we have in india for example rasam uh, you know uh, dal makhani okay uh, i don't know how, how many of you actually tried it out if you haven't please do check it out um, it actually is one of the packages where we saw there is a substantial reduction of greenhouse gas emissions during the entire production process uh, plus given the fact that it is uh, packaging certain specific kind of food items uh it's the uh, technology means that it is heated to a certain extent at a very high temperature as the product is already inside the package okay so again very innovative uh and we what it actually has done is that it has substantially reduced the amount of electricity uh reduced the amount of water consumption so in a nutshell i would like to close by saying that we have multiple solutions multiple technologies we are leveraging both in the packaging side both in the as well as in the processing side and it's a constant endeavor uh, at no point of time do we stop um, i'll probably touch upon our recycling initiatives maybe in our next round thank you thank you mr sataji and amit uh, already you said about you are uh, different from what we are discussing but without regulation it is a difficult to control the claim if you look at lot of people are still claiming this the biodegradable plastics or biodegradable packaging that's the one side and then what i mentioned about microplastic how we are going to address these issues what is the current status of the regulation in our nation the globe 
then what are the regulation need to be implemented in the future for the industry perspective please sure thanks i think uh, you know let me thank you first of all by painting the picture of the problem for us to start with and uh, uh, you know that was a reminder that what we are dealing with so thank you for that uh, you know the problem is real and uh, that's the reason that uh, as a nation possibly we are one of the nation where we have most extensive piece of uh, regulatory framework uh, which talks about the commitment as a country that we have right and it has gone through various iterations since the time it has come the plastic waste management rules a uh, lot of industry consultation has happened on that uh, if you see from a framework point of view we have a framework which clearly provides timeline based recycle reuse you know other categories of targets that the government expects industry to do <clears throat> i think we have just heard mondelez we have heard tetra all the responsible companies have already kind of gone ahead and put in the public domain what is the commitment they have either whether they are global companies or you know domestic companies they have put their good intent and there is a lot of good work also that has happened uh, that is also a fact of the matter but the fact is that we are still sitting today and when i hear some of you you know the problem is still remain unresolved right uh, so that's the magnitude of the problem so the re regulatory framework is there uh, you know intent is there corporates wants to do it uh, but the fact remains this this problem is such a, the magnitude of the problem is such and the co it the complexity of the problem is there that it requires very different kind of a solutions it requires a lot of collaboration it requires a lot of innovations and as as uh, you know wherein the talked about it requires the ecosystem to come together you know one of the thing which i find possibly missing today is that while there are individual targets that companies have and they are kind of solving for that and trying to find a solution uh, the larger problem still remains which means the all the pieces are not coming together and solving the problem right so what requires therefore is more collaborative approach some solution which brings all these individual pieces of excellence put together right so if tetra is doing something mondelez is doing something merico is doing something unilever is doing something all of these need to come together and talk to each other to solve the lot larger problem of the nation i think that's where possibly i feel that is missing so i have not found one collaboration which is really solving for this right i think that the first point i really want to make since this is uh, the discussion is about foods right and we are talking in the in the foods panel i think there are few unsolved issues or open questions uh, from a food industry point of view uh, the first one being the problem of reuse right now there are targets on reuse plastic which has been put already in the legislation the expectation is that the food industry will start doing the reuse of plastic uh now there is a dichotomy here because of the reason that we are talking of sustainable goods versus safety of consumers uh so far there are no clear guidelines uh to say that how a plastic can be reused suppose if i am selling a 5 liter pack can i get the same back from the market how do i clean it to ensure that it completely it is completely safe to again store a food product and sell it to the consumer right so those are open answers while expectation is there we don't have the technical answers on that how many times can i reuse the same plastic that is that is not clear uh so so yeah that dichotomy is there and it also has a problem because so far if you see the plastic uh regulation framework it is brand agnostic when i say brand agnostic means you can procure any plastic which you are not selling and you can still kind of recycle and fulfill your obligation the moment you start talking about reuse the reuse cannot be brand agnostic i will have to essentially procure my own material get it back clean it make it ready for again storing the food and then sell it in the market now that substantially increases the cost of reuse right uh the logistic of that is very very uh, cumbersome uh, the ecosystem of that is cumbersome the current supply chain is not ready for that right so in the context of food reuse has to be really thought through from a point of view of consumer safety how do we make it safe and has to be thought through even that how it will practically pan out because the supply chain and the system as i said is not ready for that even i don't think the consumer acceptability of that is something that has been tested so i think there are multiple level challenges when it comes to use of reuse of plastic uh, in the uh, in the in the food sector there are similar challenges in recycle as well uh, uh, 
FSSAI has come out with some clarifications on how recycled material can be used, uh, but largely it in the space of PET, so other kind of uh, material have not been clarified. There is a, a open uh, kind of issues over there. So largely industry is currently struggling with clarity on this and how to go, go forward. I think again it requires consultation with experts, with industry, take into account the practicality of the industry, work together in the ecosystem to find out a solution on this as to how do we implement because yes food industry do con consume a lot of plastic right that is also a fact but as my previous panelists have said it has a lot to do with consumer safety it has a lot to do with the experience in the hands of consumer and you cannot compromise that as well so we have to balance the approach between sustainability and the consumer safety uh, is, is a larger point that I want to make at this stage. Uh, and yeah, I, I, I honestly believe that to solve the larger problem of uh, uh, the plastic that we have, legislation is not the only answer. This is a very typical legislation where you need an interface of law because you want to push things, but you need a lot of economics to come into play. You need collaboration to come up to play. You want consumer to start accepting it. Uh, so a lot of things have to come together for this law to be successful. So this yes. is a peculiar legislation. This is not like you make a regulation and it becomes successful. So yeah, those are my comments on this. Thank you, Amit. We discussed a lot about the packaging, the look and transport, everything. But packaging is solved another issue also. If you look at some of the heat sensitive molecules, for example, vitamins, or beta carotene, or in sake of iron, if you wanted to supplement iron through the food system, you can't give it directly because oxidation may be prevalent. So we need a proper packaging to that. How to preserve the nutrient with the packaging? And also how to make it this packaging is a more circular economy. Maybe I request Sujata ma'am to light on that. Thank you. Um, I, I, I would like to take one step back. We heard about the problem. We heard perspectives from everyone. I'll, because I work for the, uh, as HEL, we are one of the largest food company. I would like to take one step back and start the problem from how packaging is super critical in delivering food security. Um, one of the things that we showed in our stall yesterday is uh, a, a crop like seasonal crops like tomato, which is perishable, only a one week uh, kind of a shelf life for a fresh produce. If we need to make de-seasonalize it, make it available to consumer through the entire year, and also reduce waste, then packaging is the solution. And uh, packaging enables in reducing agricultural waste and also extend shelf life so that uh, consumers can enjoy a nutritious food across the entire year. And this is super critical because by 2050, the world, uh, it's going to be 9 billion people we need to feed with uh, less land for growing crop. So that means we need a waste-free world and packaging plays an extremely important role in uh, providing food security in that. So that is the point where I want to start with. So in that point, as HVL, what we believe is a system change is required to get uh, a circular uh, uh, economy approach for plastic. And this system change starts from new business models, infrastructure building for recycling, regulatory transformation, and of course, uh, consumer behavior change and education. So this is what we believe. And uh, this is a problem that many of us know in industry decades back. So this is something that, and it is not easy to address. So there is a lot of initiative and research and technology development that we have been working on. Of course, this is a massive problem where uh, uh, if we think we can do it alone, uh, it, we, we cannot do anything. So it requires a lot of collaboration, partnerships, uh, for developing technologies, and uh, that's what we have been working on. And our uh, approach here is uh, less plastic, better plastic, and no plastic. So this is our approach. Now, very specifically going into, uh, in, when it comes to foods, uh, food provides energy and nutrition to the consumer. Many of the foods that we sell requires high barrier property. And so the challenge in developing alternates is how do we ensure the taste is preserved, and it's the it delivers the foods. It uh, there is it's not it sealing properties are good, so that there is no contamination, and we can assure food safety to the consumer. And over and above, it's also the experience of the packaging. Uh, like 
what he said the first thing consumers interact in a food product or packaged food product is the packaging and it need to be easily openable and it need to be easy to hold uh, it should be uh, 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 any uh, no creases at superior quality so that uh, the experience to the consumer is not compromised when we develop alternates and these are the things that we take care while developing alternate materials especially for some of our foods like the freeze dried coffee or our horlicks which is a spray dried food which require high barrier uh, packaging we have developed alternates using technologies of metallized uh, bobp which provides many of these properties and uh, we are even using it in our rupees 5 sachets recycled ready structures so uh, i'm delighted to share over decades of work both through our global capabilities as well as our r&d in india uh, today 67% of our portfolio foods and refreshment portfolio is recycled ready so this is the first step which is the better plastic and uh, uh, and this is only possible by developing uh, technologies together with our partners and uh, with uh, our other experts in the field so that we are able to build scale and capacity for it so that we are able to get this to the consumer and while developing all this all of your consumers and uh, we all know the magnitude of the problem but how many of you will be ready to pay a few bucks extra because it is a recycle ready structure we know nobody right and that is another challenge when we develop these alternates they need to be affordable they need to be uh, uh, if it is an on cost it's as uh, companies we invest in in these on cost uh, to be able to take this to the consumer the second thing i'll come to is how do we get uh, 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 less plastic so the less plastic we do think we believe uh, we spoke about um, we are recycling a lot of plastic but if we are able to get a pcr plastic to be uh, used in food i think that is a, a a big solution because today from all the things uh, uh, dr anand raman spoke about plastic is still one of the uh, a lower ghg material uh, with which uh, we can take a, a safe food to the consumer so we believe if we have a uh, recyc uh, uh, good recyclable infrastructure uh, we should be able to get a uh, uh, your food grade and fully safe pcr plastic uh, for foods and also we have built global capability many other countries have already approved use of pcr in primary packaging for foods and as unilever we have already implemented in many countries after very rigorous uh, food safety assessment that they are conducive for uh, use a, without any compromise in food safe in food quality and safety we have implemented pcr plastic for primary packaging globally in many countries where the regulation allows and uh, today in india together with many of our partners we have built capability for pcr plastic to be used in secondary packaging so we have replaced many of our uh, flexible secondary packaging with uh, pcr plastic uh, and uh, and i think that is one of the opportunity in india how do we build infrastructure for recycling plastic and something that i would also highlight uh, with uh, uh, many other uh, partners uh, as unilever we are funding the with ocean fund which is uh, managed by circulate uh, capital we are together with multiple companies we have invested uh, 100 uh, million dollars to build infrastructure for recycling plastic i think more such initiative and together with uh, uh, multiple companies here will really uh, provide the infrastructure for uh, recycling plastic and getting the pcr plastic uh, uh, viable as a viable solution in india for foods thank you ma'am it's uh, wonderfully you covered it uh, now i request uh, dr kadiravan because a lot of coating has to be done when you use the papers even simple if you make it the butter paper for the cake and anything if you need need that coatings how we address the issues how we can go for the innovation and the coatings because we can use the tetra pack already as showcase the paper can be used for the even retort can we coating can be used a different aspect can you light on that how your research and how we can go on that hello yeah 
thank you, sir. Um, yeah, before answering your question, um, I just want to put a question to the audience. Uh, you know, when you talk about sustainable packaging, uh, you know, and we talk about redesigning, and we, in fact, redesigning a packaging is often not the first choice. It's actually the last choice, right? So when you want to try to develop something new and to the packaging material, that requires a lot of time and effort, and also we need to go through a lot of regulatory approvals and things like that. But at the same time, if we can only do sort of so much of uh, you know recycling and reducing and reusing, then it is you know it doesn't hurt to take a step back and look at our food packaging with a fresh mind and see how we can redesign it. Now, when we want to redesign it, as you said, should we redesign it for recyclability or should we redesign it for biodegradability? Two options are there. There is no single answer to it because just like food has a variety, food packaging also has a variety. So you have some for some applications, recyclable food packaging is better. For some applications, if a biodegradable food packaging could be better, particularly where food packaging is going to be contaminated with a lot of food waste, like a food, then it becomes difficult to recycle. So in those applications, it's better to make a compostable or biodegradable food packaging. Now coming to your question of how the coating technology has you know, evolved to make the things more biodegradable and things like that. Uh, you know, again here, again we have two approaches. You make the biodegradable, uh, you make the barrier coating on the packaging materials in such a way that it still doesn't have a detrimental effect on recycling. So industries are more towards that approach today because the, bio, the other approach of compostable coatings or compostable barrier coatings is still, you know, has to go through a lot, you know, a lot of developments to meet all the requirements. So when it comes to designing a barrier layer for recyclability, people have found that if you could reduce the thickness of the barrier layer and still achieve the same barrier properties, then you know you could still recycle it, and that's what people now found that if if, if you have a paper-based packaging, for example, if you can still retain 95% of the paper, you know, paper packaging as fibers, and only 5% or less than 5% is a barrier layer, which is made of a synthetic polymer or whatever, it's still recyclable. So the, the, then the question is, how do you do it, and how do you make sure that with that thin layer you would still retain the biodegradability? And what people are doing here is shifting away from the extrusion coating, which is typically what's practiced in industry for barrier layer, polyolefin layers, uh, people are trying to look at water-based polyolefin dispersions as, a, as an alternative. So it, the idea is so if you can spray coat or you know, do a conventional uh, blade coating or whatever, you can achieve a much lower thickness compared to what extrusion coating can be done. So the thing is, if you look at only the existing process, then you won't have a solution to it. So you have to you know, think out of the box. Why do I always have to do extrusion coating? No, I can do some other, of course it may increase the cost, it may do us, but then oh, looking at overall sustainability, we have to sacrifice somewhere. So people are moving towards water-based polyolefin dispersion coatings and things like that, which you know, if, uh, you know, if we could make it thinner, then the entire packaging becomes recyclable. So even so you can still be with the you know, non-biodegradable polymer itself. The other uh, you know, innovations people are trying to do here is, as you said, you know, talking about is coating with plant-based materials. I mean, plant-based materials are also, you know, uh, like I would say five years back, uh, we were in a very, very, uh, you know, uh, initial, initial stages. But right now, some products are into the market where people are making barrier coatings completely from plant-based proteins. Uh, I think Kutamaki has a product uh, out in the you know, market. And then we also have people looking at corn-based, uh, you know, zine, zine as a protein, which is also used in packaging material. The challenges with, uh, you know, using a biodegradable, biodegradable coating layer uh, on a packaging material is, not a single biodegradable polymer have all the bio, no, all the barrier properties. Because when you talk about barrier properties, we talk about oxygen, we talk about water vapor, we talk about uh, grease resistance and all those things. And can you imagine a single polymer can do all these things? Probably not. And so what we need, uh, what people do here is take a um, like multi-layer approach again. So making uh, you know, different biopolymers, one for water vapor transmission, reducing the water vapor transmission, one for reducing the oxygen. So like, just like food is a recipe, food packaging itself has become a recipe now with multiple components built into it. And this brings a fresh challenge because that now you know, brings a uh, difficulty like you know, it adds multiple processing steps, it adds to the cost, but at the same time, you ought to also have to make sure that nothing leaches into the food and affects the food safety. So that is where the challenge is there in today. It is not about we don't have options to replace uh, the barrier layer like aluminum or EVOH, EVOH with a biodegradable coating. We have multiple uh, biopolymers. I know we have a lot of uh, uh, reinforcements which you can add. All those approaches are there. But the problem is, how do you make sure that it is food safe? How do you make sure that it is still meets all the multiple requirements of a food packaging material, yet remains cost effective? And that is why recyclability is more practiced today. Designing packaging for recyclability is more, uh, you, know, uh, you know, people try to take that approach than making a biodegradable layer for 
you know, barrier layers. Thank you, Kader. Uh, we'll first round, we complete it. Now, if you look at, uh, we are talking about Indian food processing industry. Yes, we are doing it. All the processed food we need to pack, and everything is fine. But as a consumer, if you look at India's scenario, we are ordering all online meal, lunch, dinner, everything. Look at the packaging, how much they are putting on that. It's one side processed food packaging, another side, this is the fresh food packaging also increasing in huge in our country. So how we are going to address this one? At the industry side, if you look at, if you talk about sustainable packaging, always cost into that. If you look at one 50 gram biscuit, biscuit, packaging, all together they're selling at five rupees. If you Think about going for the sustainable packaging, cost will increase. How we are going to address as the in industry. Another one is that the total market, we are talking about 28 billion in India, but the municipalities, corporations, what they're spending money for segregation, doing all the things, 137 billion amount of worth we are spending here. So this, how to reduce this gap. This is the another challenge. And then regulations, how to regulate. Until and unless, as a consumers, we need to adapt the proper methodology of practicing ourselves. So I wanted to put up the question to all of you. Which is the one you think we need to address? It is open. You can tell this is the way industry has to start thinking on the directions for the reaching of the net zero for the 2070 as a India or 2050. And this is the what consumer has to practice or the mindset has to change towards that. Or you can think about, forget about the paper, or forget about aluminum. This is the way we need to go. We, we can't advocate. We have to go back old days. See, like if you look at uh, recently, uh, Chennai High Court has told you can't pack the milk in the plastic pouch. Yes, court is right. But what is the alternative with us? Milk has to be pasteurized. You can't deliver the milk without process. Then which packaging material is available for us? So this concerns, yes, I, we accept the court verdict, but same time, yes, a industry, yes, a regulators, yes, a government agencies, we have our responsibility to come forward to give a solution for that. What are the solutions? We don't have the, any bottles, glass bottles, alternative to that. Glass bottles, difficult to transport like that. So I open up the questions, whatever you like to give light to the, our audience. Uh, industry responsibility or the consumer responsibility or the government agency responsibility or any incentives has to be given from the Ministry of Food Processing or the Government of India. Please give your suggestions. I'll, I'll start. Um, I, I think it's a very pertinent question and I think Amit already touched on this. I think a lot depends on uh, consumers' acceptability. And as I mentioned earlier, I think it's a ecosystem question. So there is no one solution. I think we need definitely as consumers, right? We are also consumers on the other side. Uh, so as consumers, I think we need to start thinking about one, like all these five R's. And I think the good thing is that the awareness is actually improving. And you mentioned like the, you know, quick commerce. Quick commerce is changing the way the game is being played today. Um, you can get everything in 10 minutes, but that also means a lot more packaging. Again, I think the good thing is some of these companies are uh, showing a very responsible behavior. So even on their website, when you are ordering, they basically gives you an option. You, do you need uh, the cutlery? Do you need X, Y, Z? Which is, I think, great. That's a very small step, but I think very great step. But as a consumer also, I think we have to start embracing some of this and be ready to pay little extra cent. Now, what will happen is, I think, the. The answer to this is circular economy. That extra cent will go back into the economy, will help to develop those new technologies, will help to uh, develop the scalable materials. Uh, the second thing is, uh, as I think organizations, we are also uh, educating our own design team. For sake of example, in Mondelez, globally, we have a tool called Eco uh, Calculator. So basically, it works on the full life cycle of the material. So when a developer wants to develop a certain type of uh, product, what sort of material uh, is needed, what is the carbon emission of that material, what is the impact of shelf life, cost, and everything. And I think same need to be provided as, like, same visibility need to be provided to the consumer as well. Because I think that is where this will become more like a, uh, a chain reaction where I think the education, right? And, and education is 
the reason why I think some of us basically have adapted whatever good practices today we have. Uh, second one is I think the chemical uh, recycling and I think uh, Sujata touched a little bit on that one. Um, it's probably one of the best things for the circular economy because it almost strips the material down to its original form and then it can almost eliminate the use of virgin plastic and stuff. Of course, it's going to be expensive to start with, but then as the scale develops, I think that's when uh, these things will start to become more and more uh, economical. Uh, another example I think I just wanted to give is where I think as Mondelez we have participated is use of some of these uh, materials, like particularly the multiple layer plastics for recycle boards. Now these boards uh, we are employing in like schools and in parks, in one of our uh, uh, expansion sites in Shri City, we are using these boards to build all the facilities for the workers. Now, the beauty of this is these boards can be stripped down and then recycled again. So, but I think the challenge still remains how many times can we re recycle it, like Amit said. So, I think it's ongoing journey, but intent is required, and then I think it will happen one day. Thank you. Quickly, because we need another last 15 minutes, we'll open up for the discussion as well. Quickly. Uh, I'm sorry, Anand, uh, like in the last discussion when you asked about the uh, this segregation of uh, the bioplastic with the reg regular stream, I would like to tell you, yes, uh, uh, there is a challenge, but uh, there are significant report has come that even uh, the bioplastics, especially bi biodegradable plastic, can also go with the conventional plastic in a processing line. Uh, as you know that uh, one of friend has mentioned that uh, uh, we are not opening the recycled, recyclable plastic other than the PET for the food packaging applications. Uh, now the concern has started that uh, it has to be done. Now we were talking about the microplastics uh, and we are very much scared about it. Uh, I think we have to be cautious when we are taking this packaging in a as far as the food, food, or food contact material is concerned. So that's what the regulatory framework is working on it. Uh, uh, being a chair of the panel of pack food packaging in FSSI, we, we are deliberating this. We are trying to come up with a solution which is uh, industry as well as a consumer friendly, but at the same time we should not compromise the safety of the consumers. That's a prime concern about it and we'll try to optimize, uh, optimize these uh, processes. Another question, I mean to say, uh, Madam Sujata and other members have also mentioned that the team of uh, industries, they would like to come together and make the solution. I request them, whenever you make the team, you bring the researchers on board as well, so that we could be able to come up with the holistic solution as far as the packaging are concerned. Another concern also has come, when we talk about the packaging, can, are we overburdened the packaging be, uh, in relation with the food? If the food is for service life is uh, uh, three hours, or the food having a service life of uh, one day, why would like to make a packaging for six months? I mean to say we can, we can optimize, we can optimize why we are going for a multi-layer which is not required for many, uh, many cases we could able to go to the monolithic uh, uh, kind of a single layer material. So a lot of challenges, uh, we have to rethink whether we have overburdened, we have to come up uh, uh, kind of a packaging material which may be optimized. And as far as the circular, as far as, as the circularity are concerned, recycling as, uh, is concerned. Sometime what happened, I'm sorry to say that some of the food that we used to pack for a six months time, the cons consumption is only for 15 days. And then we are used to design a package for the six months. Sometime we go for the multi-layer films and we talk about uh, that so five layers, we have a barrier, uh, metallic films and all. Can we come up with this, the solution which is going to be a more optimum and sustainable for a shorter service life? I think we have to rethink. All collectively have to rethink in order to come up uh, uh, with a better solution in order to make the packaging uh, more sustainable. Uh, coating our concern, yeah, that could be also uh, uh, very important because uh, Madam has suggested the packaging is very important because it's still, though we have a packaging, 30% of our food uh, 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 harvest, uh, I mean, so there is a post-harvest losses are there. Uh, through a packaging, we can able to uh, manage this. Uh, but at the same time, uh, also the coatings can play a very important role. 
most of the time now the new technologies like edible coatings are coming into the picture it has been found very positive effect so in very primary uh, applications of uh, preserving a food through a, a package we can also attempt these kind of uh, newer technologies thank you chatterjee so what i will uh, do is i'll talk about some of the challenges uh, i'll talk about some of the challenges and how we probably could actually look at ways of addressing these uh, i think some of my colleagues have already touched upon it uh, one is primarily that while the law is there and the law is constantly evolving we need to also think about as responsible producers how can we do our bit okay um, as an example tetra pak way before so the epr or the extended policy uh, uh, producer responsibilities came in uh, only around 2016 onwards 2018 onwards they have been constantly evolving as, as an organization way back for the last 20 odd years we have been working with the value system with the value chain to enhance the collection and the recycling systems and we believe that it was also our responsibility to do our bit in ensuring that our packages getting collected getting recycled at the appropriate times uh, we have created a complete partnership with the value chain and this was our bit uh, at the same time like i said as the law is evolving there are certain let's say new regulations which are coming into play where i think there is still a lot of ambiguity for example i think amit mentioned about uh, this law of now uh, a minimum of 5% recycled content which kicks in from 2025 uh because our packaging is used for packaging food and beverages uh what should be the standards in terms of food safety is something that i think is still evolving we are still awaiting that that clarity in addition to it i think uh if you see that if you have time please do visit the tetra pak booth see the range of recycled products that we have been able to develop in partnership with the value systems um do we really have an excellent market for these products i don't think so uh there are certain pockets for example in mumbai all the auto rickshaw seats that you will see are made up of cartons which have been recycled uh can it be scaled further on a national basis i'm sure it can be but is the awareness there i don't think so we can do much more about creating awareness consumer uh you know getting to see what is really happening once they dispose of the cartons and related to that i think the other larger issue is the way we actually see segregation happening you don't really see segregation happening even in urban cities like delhi or mumbai uh, you know that's a major problem and therefore what we do is we end up really becoming over dependent on the informal uh, value chain partners or the collection partners to do this work for us finally we also talked about partnerships uh, among the corporates i think that's a excellent idea uh, because like i said there are some initiatives that as producers we can do but as brand owners as the recyclers as everyone i think there has to be an ecosystem which is more robust because otherwise we are looking at a problem which is just going to get phenomenally big so this is the time to actually partner together think about more innovative ways on how we can address this problem before it becomes too big a problem for us thank you thank you sir amit so uh, i think most of the points have already been made uh, you know i i just want to quote at, at merico while we are doing what needs to be done for compliance uh, you know and going beyond our responsibility we have a not for profit arm called merico innovation foundation merico innovation foundation picked up this issue of plastic a uh, few years back to say that we need to really find out why it's not working i think the point that i also raised that why it's not working and there is a detailed report which was published last year on the plastic problem of india which really talked about and it had inputs for various experts and everyone and it talks about identifies the issue on the ground uh, what are the regulatory challenges and in some way provides a way forward as well and the answer is the circular economy as only you know the circularity that everyone has talked about that's really the answer now to test that model that has been put in that study we have started some work in two cities 
uh, as uh, uh, you know the, the pain is talking about the segregation is a problem we have started that by creating awareness and education amongst the consumer for segregation so that's the first step to really make them responsible and make them understand the importance of segregation right then working with the rag pickers and all to make them understand how the segregation has stood done properly uh, the other part of the ecosystem is there are a lot of small small innovations even in if you see a lot of stalls here there are few pieces of innovations we talked about sustainable packaging but they they could not be scaled up right so how these small startups share uh, the the people who are coming with in innovation through government helps to help of some of the corporates can we scale them up because possibly they may come out with some solution right i'm not saying it is the only solution but some solution could be there now as a part of that merico innovation foundation had actually helped these some of the new startups who have come out with solution on 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 the packaging and we gave them access to market access to right kind of a a marketing approach access to right kind of a technological expertise that they that may need that may need so that is another part of the ecosystem that we can work with and of course as mr vimal rightly ta talked about that the industry and the regulator need to come together uh, on this and try to find out the solution because this is not not the problem of as i said it is not a problem of regulation this is not about saying that hey industry is not doing something i i as a regulator is going to enforce it it is a country problem right and all of us have to come together to find it so i think it's important that the stakeholders in this whether it is consumer government regulators industry sit together on the same table and try to find a solution for this then only it can be scalable so yeah circular economy is the answer to your question thank you thank you sujata ma'am yes. uh uh i i i think many points are made i had also mentioned earlier a system change for circular economy i think we have touched on that maybe i'll touch a different point how innovations can really help uh, and consumer behavior change i think these two will be really required if you are talking recycling is the future and that is what will be more viable solution of the future then there is a consumer behavior change required on segregation and also a entire waste management system is really needed so that the right material goes to the right infrastructure for getting recycled and here uh, we do a lot of work by collaborating with UNDP and uh, 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 other partners which and building a uh, end to end waste management system which helps uh, in doing a right uh, waste segregation and waste management and also uh, small initiatives that we take is how do we do campaign around consumer education about segregation and bring in a behavior change i think there is a lot that we can do around this and uh, personally i am a big favorite of innovations and how technologies can play a role a lot of you spoke about uh, um, the food that is remaining back in the uh, packaging also leads to uh, a, a barrier for recycling and that is where some of the innovations about coating technologies that uh, we spoke about which not only reduces food waste but also make the packaging to be more recyclable i think more such innovations will really help and the last bit i would like to cover is we spoke about do we need to design everything for a 12 to 15 month shelf life can uh, the eating out which is a fresh food packaging can it have a shelf much lower shelf life this is something we experimented at uh, more in uk as a, a four way partnership which was uh, uh, innovate uk kind of a, a funding and with uh, some of our part nopla who is a startup who is working a lot on seaweed edible packaging so during covid this is the uh, a trial that we did with them where it is uh, packing our as uh, uh, ketchups and uh, helmand mayonnaise into edible small sachets which are just done uh, with an infrastructure at the um, uh, the uh, like zomatos uh, the people who are um, uh, packing the food for consumers uh, there is a smaller machine that was put there and they are packed on the spot and it just have a 15 day shelf life and it reaches consumer home and you just open it and it is an edible packaging so i do think uh, some of this new technologies um, uh, more and more innovations uh, or uh, research need to be done there and uh, this could definitely be a future because it is a completely circular it's a plant based uh, and edible packaging and it doesn't leave any any footprint and more such uh, fit for purpose packaging uh, could be an answer for the future thank you kadir quickly Uh, thank you uh, to be brief uh, you know i just wanted to say you know uh, packaging is produced in the industry 
but it meets its death at the consumer's hand. So both, I know, the industry and the consumer have to cooperate to make sure that the packaging becomes more sustainable. Uh, the, there's a fresh mindset change that we need, that is looking at packaging as a resource and not as a litter. Right? Whether you design um, packaging for recyclability or biodegradability, uh, I, unless the consumer sorts it out and separates it into a recyclable or a compostable material, the packaging is not going to be sustainable. Industries can do a lot of innovations, but if the consumer throws a biodegradable plastic in a bitumen road, it's not going to biodegrade. Uh, if it goes to the land, uh, marine, and ocean, not all biodegradable plastics will be marine biodegradable. So fishes are going to eat the microplastics. So a lot has to do with the consumer behavior, as Madam also pointed out. So education is the key here. One side is innovation. The equally important aspect is education for a country like India, where we have a diverse population, different education levels, and things like that. We need to have real education about people, about all the food packaging that we have should be either recyclable or biodegradable. And there should be a clear labeling on it, just like we have no vegetarian and non-vegetarian dots on the food packaging. We should have, this is compostable, this is recyclable. And the consumer should be able to easily pick it out, right from a small child to a big, you know, any, any person should be able to look at the label and say, this is a compostable, this goes into the compostable bin, this is a recyclable, and this goes to the recyclable bin. Then all our innovations can come to a success. Otherwise, even though we lot of innovations we can do, consumer is going to throw away with the perishable waste, wet waste, and then all the food packaging, whatever we do, cannot be a success. Thank, Thank you, Kadir. Thank you. And we will open up the floor, and maybe we can ask any questions. I mentioned about yourself. A background and uh, to whom you wanted to ask question. Otherwise, open to any panelist. Anyone can answer. It. Please go ahead. Anyone can help to have a mic. Take this mic. Okay. I'm Dr. Reshma from CSR Nistrivandrum from Sir's lab. Uh, actually, just one point, like when I pass through gate five here, I'm just touching about reuse, reduce. I think I'm just putting in the forum, like today, this e event, we can assess how much plastic we have generated and how much next event we will reduce. Because gate five, I found it too much of loaded with, we are thinking about food, but there are some certain things where we can reduce. Because food, as you all said correctly, there are a lot of challenges. But if we can focus on all those aspects, here we have more freedom to, because shelf life and all that is very critical. So, and also I'm excited about all the points mentioned and also as a developer in the food, like I think as sir said, like as it should be like eco-developing, like we are, uh, look, we have to look up to the packaging level, the final, uh, uh, just like, uh, just going with the formulation or with the machine designing, uh, the researcher's responsibility start from the, uh, the scratch to the uh, packaging level. So I think that will be these two points I would like to touch. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Uh, quickly? Yeah, please. Yeah, next to you, sir. My question is for Dr. Vimal. I'm Shekhar Setu. I'm director in Tetra Pak uh, Food for Development. Um, so you talked about, uh, uh, you know, fit for purpose packaging and, you know, not requiring six months shelf life. Uh, we have enough data points and, uh, you know, research available that uh, uh, particularly milk when it is stored in hard to reach areas in Northeast, etc., where, uh, you know, milk availability becomes a very big challenge. Six layer packaging for milk plays a very, very important role in reaching nutrition to those families and uh, even in uh, schools for school children. Just wanted to make a point. Do you have any... Uh, you mentioned that I didn't get any examples from you on where it is not required. So, What I really would like to touch upon, I'm not going for asking to the individ individual uh, exam, I mean to say particular examples, uh, but I really uh, put a thought among us, can we think of to optimize the packaging for the the, as, as, per as, a, as, as far as the food contact and food storage are concerned. I mean to say that, as you have mentioned, that uh, these kind of uh, commodities uh, can be stored for, a, I mean to say, is required for uh, storing it, but there could be a, a many ways in order to reduce and optimize the packaging solution. So I mean to say, there are a, a absolute packaging sense to take it for an infinite time, but can we optimize it in order to make it a more sustainable and to come uh, to optimize with the self, uh, I mean to say, bridge between the self life and the uh, service life of the package. 
that is a generic uh, 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 concern what i have raised not a particular uh, maybe case. i think you understand sir has mentioned about open it is not particularly anything else that will be maybe there a, a perspective that yes, i please. would like to this give the uh, uh, please i think it, it is I, the sir. point is more about are we uh, designing a uh, are we over is it over engineered i think that's a general point but something uh, that's more uh, uh, what we do today uh, is uh, we put best before and use by it's it's all about how do we reduce uh, the food waste uh, so your your use by is the product is safe to consume until that particular date yes. your best buy is there could be a small sensory change so today this is allowed in regulation yes. so today what we are encouraging is the food can be used until we put the more the use by date so that the food is not wasted when it is fit for purpose when it is safe to consume uh, we encourage consumers to use until the use by date this significantly reduces food waste this could be another lens yeah. to what uh, dr vimal katyar was mentioning yeah. thank you ma'am please go ahead hello everyone uh, i'm spurti here i come from karnataka i'm an entrepreneur uh, particularly in pulses processing Uh, my question is with re uh, regards to extended producer responsibility uh, uh, for example uh, a lot of uh, i'll just take an example airline companies and all buy uh, a lot of food products and is a major chunk in their revenue in terms of the services that they provide on, on board with respect to food or etc now uh, uh, when they report in their B brsr reporting and all of that they say that you know this is not are responsibly i'm just taking airline as an example it can be hotels or etc so who does on who uh, and given like our masses they don't know how to segregate the masses or educated we don't segregate our waste uh, so who does the onus fall on to with respect to this like does it come on the producer company like who has done the packaging or that's my answer. question yeah yeah ma'am yeah, maybe you look at uh, me <laughs> okay Anyway. so i'll start and then you can i think all of us uh, it's it's a great question all of us actually touched upon the epr targets as companies we have and also many of us have been talking it's such a massive problem one it cannot be solved by one individual so uh, it's a collective responsibility and uh, many of the companies are uh, taking this ownership and every every one of us sitting here spoke about uh, the epr target that we have and we uh, we set up we have targets where we collect more than more plastic than we sell uh, that's a kind of at least uh, from hul and we also heard from our other counterparts that they have very similar epr targets and uh, like you said it's it's also about educating when we collect are we collecting the right thing so when we set up these uh, uh, collection systems it is also not just you collect but setting up an entire end to end waste management system where we train the people who are collecting on how to segregate so that the collection the epr uh, work that we do is meaningful because the plastic that is collected can indeed go for recycling so that is the kind of systems many companies really do so it's a collective responsibility everybody has a role to play starting from we at home uh, educate like we are educating our uh, children about don't waste food it's also about reduce the plastic use is starting it starts at home and then it need it travels across nt thank you ma'am any any more yeah please hi my name is aman i am from r&d packaging hul from ma'am's team so uh, i have a question or i can say i have i have a suggestion for all of us because we were talking about the consumer behavior and the end of uh, uh, life cycle and the circular economy issue that we are facing that the disposal is a challenge and as well as the consumer behavior and the education part so why uh, chal, uh, for the government agency what we can do is we can take best practices across the states some states are doing good Uh, recycling at the home stage and then we can take examples and use it for other states and then as a or also we can do incentivization to the rack pickers basically that will help to promote the waste collection of the plastics which are not intended to be uh, not intended to give them some profit the sachets which are the very low cost for them so they don't intend to pick them up so some kind of incentivization some education in form of sharing the best practices that's my opinion but uh, uh, that's my question to any one of you 
Yeah, definitely. This will be uh, put up to the Ministry of Food Processing, uh, other regulatories, and already some of the things are added. For example, PLI scheme, they added the millet to be added, this percentage that already included. Maybe now we can give the recommendation to the Ministry of Food Processing. They can add the sustainable packaging, either both existing scheme of PMKSY or the PLI scheme can be added, some percentage. If they use as a sustainable packaging, you can give some incentive. It's a good idea, then we can recommend from this panel itself. Thank you, sir. Yeah, hi, my name is Vinay Tiwari. So I have a question with uh, Mr. Varinder Jaswal. Okay, now, uh, so I'll just put forward three facts and then I'll ask my question. So first fact is that when you talk about the plastic consumption, you would see that the LUPs consume maximum plastic of the similar weight of the product, right? So that is first thing. Second fact is that most of these LUP markets are rural market and rural markets are highly price sensitive market, yeah? Third thing is that uh, the, uh, as on today, the plastic, the PCR plastic, forget about chemical recycling, but the, even the mechanical PCRs are much costlier than the virgin plastic. So how do you justify the business sense in you know, uh, implementing the recyclability in LUPs? And until we don't implement recyclability in LUPs, we will not be able to solve the plastic problem. Thanks for the question. Sorry, where did you say you come from? So I'm from actual R&D packaging case. Thank you. So I was going to say, Sujata already addressed your question <laughs> on uh, LUP, but I think, I think you make a very good point and I think it's a very pertinent uh, question because LUP, which is low unit price uh, packs for the, uh, for the, for the audience, uh, it is where uh, basically we as organizations are able to provide the accessibility, right? If you see our per capita consumption of some of these foods is still very low, uh, so hence, it is a very important tool, uh, the affordability and our uh, GDP still is very low as compared to other countries. So I think the question is how do we address this problem? One, I guess, is the EPR. From so, business point of view. Yeah, of see, exactly. So see, from a business point of view, the first thing is that, you know, uh, we cannot still turn the blind eye, right? I think we have to start somewhere. Obviously, it's not an easy one, uh, right? And LUP probably for all of us <laughs> big multinationals is still a big uh, uh, you know volume churner and as well as I said very important thing is the accessibility uh, from business sense I think what you have to start doing is you have to start investing in the technology right like HUL already have done and ma'am mentioned about the innovation so maybe we don't have a solution today but I think as long as we have an intent and at least the bare minimum we can do is recollect it and use it. Even if it's not up, upcycled, we at least downcycle it, right? Uh, and I think the education piece is very, very, very important. Uh, and I think that's where the, uh, the important thing is. And I think sir asked the question, right? Like how do we design some of these packaging that can go far? Unfortunately, these are the areas where basically you will need to uh, engineer packaging in that way. But then there are areas where, you know, a quick commerce for sake of example, if it's a 15 minute delivery, do you need that plastic to last for seven months, right? So I think it's a balance. Again, there is no straight answer as you know in the business. You have to kind of prioritize and then eventually get there. Yeah, yeah. one more last question. I just, I just want to add here. Uh, though we talk about whenever the when there's a discussion with the industry and whenever we talk about we always discuss about the cost as a cradle to gate approach I think the time has come where we have to talk about the cradle to credit approach and we have to be bring the LCA in all level whether it is an education in the innovation industry industry practices and all then we really come across that what is the cost of the material and the process this is just my side. right thank you sir last question if not we will conclude it already we reached the time yeah really it's a wonderful uh, discussion thank you so much for all the panelists and big round of applause from the everyone from my own behalf and you know that it is the everybody's responsibility it is not like a business or making the money maybe there but everybody's responsible as i said it is not this earth is going to be there otherwise if you look at already last year, we uh, almost reached 1.35 degree temperature of uh, surface temperature. We can't afford to cross more than 1.5 to 2 degree. If it reaches one point of time, humans are lived in this earth like that people will, somebody will say. We can't allow it to happen like that. It's everybody's responsibility. We'll work together. I wanted to say one more thing is CSIR has started a sustainable packaging mission this year. 
to address most of the things what we discussed, we are going to set up an integrated testing lab yes, exclusive for biodegradability, microbial testing, and as well as microplastic testing at CSAR NIST. And we are coming up with the different solutions for what are the problems we discussed. I want uh, industry people can access to our institute, can discuss. Any of you are interested, please uh, visit to CSAR NIST. We are happy to do that. And once again, thank you so much for everyone. It's a full hall. Some of the audience are standing almost more than an hour. Thank you so much for everyone participating in this wonderful discussion. <laughs>